Hello, I'm Dr. Neil Renault and I'm a developmental optometrist. Today I want to I want to tell you all about how your rods and your cones work in your eyes, how they make vision possible. First, before we get started, make sure to hit subscribe, follow us on Facebook and Instagram so you can stay up to date and learning more about vision. And here we go. All right, rods and cones, how it works. So about 70% of the sensory receptors in your body are related to your eyes and your vision. It's a huge percentage. And those are broken down into rods and cones. Your rods and your cones are located in the back of your eyes, kind of on the inner lining of the back of your eyes, in your retina. And that, you can think of your eyes similar to cameras. The, the rods and your cones, those photoreceptors, are just like camera film. That light that comes into your eyes, it refracts into tiny points right in the back of your eyes, starting in the center, and moving outward. All right, first rods. Rods are photoreceptors in the back of your eyes that take in light and send a send a neurological signal to your brain. We have about 120 million rods in our eyes. Rods are really more in a gray scale without color and they specialize in your peripheral vision, which is about 95% of your visual field is peripheral vision, which is dominated by your rod. Rods are also sensitive to motion and they process our vision while we are in motion and while our surroundings are in motion as well. And when I say sensitive to motion, if something moves in your peripheral vision, it's something that you are alerted to and you look right at uh, versus if your peripheral vision is static and not moving, then we're not very alert to it. It's really when, when we, perceive motion in our peripheral vision through our rods. Next, cones are another type of photoreceptor in our eyes that specialize in color and fine detail acuity. And we have about six million cones in each eye, which is a lot less than that 120 rods. So we have way less cones in our eyes. We have three different types of cones, red cones, blue cones, and green cones. So they're great at, at identifying colors and also fine detail acuity targets. Like when you're in your eye exam and you're looking at that 2020 line and identifying each letter on the line, you're using your central vision, which is dominated by your cones. So those six million cones are right in the center of your of your vision, your central vision, where I'm looking at the camera right now with my cones, I'm processing with my central vision. That's about 5% of my vision. Everything else around it is mostly rods. That 120 million rods in each eye are able to process uh, peripheral vision, which is about 95% of what I can see. So as light hits the rods and the cones, they process that information, send it in, in, in a signal through our optic nerve into our brain, from our eyes into our brain, where, uh, where we are able to process what we see. And that's how we interpret and derive meaning from our world through our eyes. It all starts at the rods and cones and the interpretation ends up in the back of the eye, or at back of the head in your brain. So I like to say rods answer the where questions, cones answer the what questions. So our, our peripheral vision with our rods guide us through space. That's how we are mobile. We can see without tunnel vision versus our cones are great at identifying, answering the what question. What am I looking at? What am I looking for? They work together constantly. So for instance, when we're driving, I may be looking at a street sign with my cones and identifying a street sign. I may be looking at the car right in front of me with my central vision, with my cones. My peripheral vision though keeps me in, in my center lane, keeps my car in the right spot. I can identify cars and a, a ball that comes out of, out of the sidewalk into the street. I can see those with my rods in my peripheral vision. So rods and cones constantly are being used for different purposes. Huge in sports too. Say you're a basketball player, you are using your cones to look at the rim, trying to make the basket while you see all of the players on the court around you with your with your rods, your peripheral vision. We're reading, we're identifying the word we're looking at with our cones, with our central vision, and then scanning ahead in our peripheral vision, keeping our spot on the page using that information from our rods. Generally, your cones are a little bit better with, with processing uh, vision in daylight where you get lots of color uh, versus your rods, are very, they dominate more in, in uh, the dark settings where we see mostly in black and white that's mostly using your rods to see as you navigate in a dark place we transition dark to light light to dark we do also need to adapt whether it's light adapt or dark adapt so say when you first turn the lights off at night it's pitch black you can't see anything but a few minutes later you've adapted to where you can see pretty good or you can find your way around the room that you're in because your rods have taken over, you are dark adapted. Uh, and then when you turn the lights on, it's the opposite. You, over a few minutes, you become more light adapted and your cones begin to take over again. Cones that perceive color, they work a little slower and fatigue quicker. 
Um, so that's that's why if you've ever seen an after image, if you look at something for a while and then look away and you can still kind of see it, that's because your cones are slowly readapting to a different visual field. The absolute worst lighting is dusk. So if you're driving a, a, and it's almost dark, it's not light at all, but it's not pitch black either, neither system is really operating optimally. Rods love the dark, cones love the, the bright light. In the dusk, we have a little bit of both. Neither one is operating perfectly. So dusk is really the toughest uh, visual visual setting or, or condition to see. Now, have you ever heard of colorblindness? Not everybody has three different type of types of cones. You may be colorblind and, and actually see some colors blending together. The most common is a red-green color deficiency where reds and greens kind of blend together. A little bit less common is a blue-yellow color vision deficiency. And it's much more common for males to be color vision deficient than for females. Color blindness is also usually genetic and it's very rare for someone to see completely black and white. Usually you have some color, you are just deficient in certain colors. And actually dogs also are, are really red green color deficient. They have two types of cones, so they do see some color, but not every color like, like a high functioning human does. So rods and cones are amazing. They vary from animal to animal. For instance, cats, they have excellent night vision, right? They have amazing rods. They all, it's almost like they have night vision goggles on when they're doing all their hunting at night. They see wonderfully in the dark while other animals struggle. Uh, eagles, they have the best visual acuity. They can see tiny little things very far away like a fish a hundred yards up when they're when they're soaring through the air they have excellent cones uh, the mantis shrimp actually has 12 different kinds of cones where we only have three they have 12 so imagine what they can see so the eye is the most fascinating organ right i love this stuff i hope you do too our specialty in our practice is all about getting the most out of your rods and your cones so make sure to talk to us if you want to learn more about how to improve the function of your vision through lenses through training and through vitamins and make sure to make sure to comment if there's another topic you want us to discuss in our upcoming how it works videos and make sure to watch next week